Hi everyone, this is Sandeep Pani. One of the most common place where people use extreme shortcuts and heuristics is in the world of investing. Really not sure why. People do so much research in before buying a $500 mobile phone or a $1,000 TV. But when it comes to investing to put your hard on $15,000 in a stock, people, most of the people, including me, we all just tend to go on the basis of, you know, the other famous investors buying the same stock or because a random guy recommended it on YouTube channel. Most people buy stocks just on the basis of tips from your friends, families, or an analyst who comes on the TV. Now today, the most happening place to get uh, tips for the stock market is Twitter and Reddit, social media. Many people invested in many stocks or rather traded in many stocks based on such tips and are wiped out when the market corrects or crashes. Now, look, if you don't really do research on stocks, you will not have the conviction to hold the companies or the stock through deep correction. One of the most important things we need to understand when we follow and you know, co-tail these big investors when they buy certain stocks is that for all those biggie investors or most successful investors in the stock market have created 80% of their wealth from just 20% of their investment holdings, almost approximately. The 80-20 rule applies there also. And most often we investors will not know which is that 20% of stocks that's gonna create 80% of their wealth. We tend to take them for granted and just blindly buy whatever stocks they buy, thinking that that would also multiply and create wealth the way it did for them. But trust me, we will not have the conviction to hold a company or stock if we don't do thorough analysis and research. And absolutely, there is no shortcut for reading and doing the research on any company and markets for that matter. Most people look at shortcut ratios like price to sales ratio, price to earnings ratio. And these are all readily available in the you know, multiple websites these days. And uh, you look at the growth rates even, I mean, that's matured a bit. And you know, then they just take a decision randomly based on these two, three heuristic parameters. And I often call, you know, when investors use these kind of thumb rules to arrive at a decision to buy a stock, these kind of shortcuts are called heuristics and uh, in behavioral economics. Now heuristics are nothing but mental shortcuts that people use to make decisions or solve problems with minimum efforts. It's not only in stock market, even in our real life, we used heuristics pretty much every aspect of our life, you know, whether it is even driving, for example, driving your car, we use heuristics a lot. Whenever we have to make a decision, we use heuristics and these are shortcuts. It's actually helpful in our day-to-day -day survival, came from our survival instincts. Now, the famous economist, behavioral economist, Daniel Kahneman and Tversky identified three key heuristics. They are representativeness, anchoring and adjustments and availability. Now heuristics are really helpful because it can reduce the burden of decision-making and free up limited cognitive resources that we have since humans needs to take thousands of decisions every day. There is a famous book written by or paper rather published by the same group of behavioral economists led by Daniel Kahneman called Judgment Under Uncertainty, Heuristics and Biases. It's a brilliant paper, must read. Uh, it's available in Amazon and it can be downloaded. And it is like a, a brilliant book that talks about a different kind of judgments under uncertainties that humans take, which are influenced by the heuristics and biases. Jim Rogers, the legendary investor has said, you know, if you get interested in a company and you read the annual reports, he said you will have done more than 98% of people on Wall Street. So that's very interesting. If you just read annual reports of the companies you buy, you are already in the top 2% of the people on Wall Street. And if you read the footnotes in the annual report, you would have done more than 100% of the people on Wall Street. That's the amount of diligence he expect us to do in the annual reports. I realized the right way that if I just literally read a company's annual reports and the notes or better yet, four to five years of historical reports, I would know much more than any investor out there. This is a very thorough conceptual conceptualized and this is very thoroughly put by Jim Rogers, the importance of reading annual reports. Now, let me leave you this video with a great video or with a great example led by Warren Buffett and uh, Charlie Munger in one of their Berkshire annual meeting. They have explicited out why it's so important to read annual reports. Hear it out. 
I really like to have, I, I like to know as much as I can about the person that's running it and how they think about the business and what's really going on in the business. In other words, I, I would like to have uh, a report that would be identical uh, to what if I owned half of a company but was away for a year and I had a partner who owned the other half, what, when I came back that he would tell me about what had taken place during the past year and what he foresaw coming up and all of that. I, I, that is what I think the purpose of the report is. Now the SEC mandates a lot of information and, and, and some of that is, is helpful. Uh, uh, but there's an intent behind the report. I mean, if it's a sales document, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm less interested. I'm, uh, and uh, I don't see any way to mandate uh, what I'm talking about. But that's the kind of report I'm looking for. What I'm trying to do as I read reports, A, I, I like to understand just generally what's going on in all kinds of businesses. If we own stock in in a company in an industry and there are eight other companies that are in the same industry, I, I want to own or be on the mailing list for the reports for the other eight because I can't understand how my company is doing unless I understand what the other eight are doing. I, I, I want to have the perspective of in terms of market share or what's going on in the business or their margins or the trend of margins or all kinds of things that I can't get unless I know. I can't be an intelligent owner of a business unless I know what all the other businesses in that in that industry are doing and so I try to get that information out of a report if I'm thinking about investing in a specific company I try to size up their business and the people that 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 are that are that are running it and over the years I uh, I, I found uh, reading a lot of reports to be quite useful in terms of making business decisions at, at Berkshire if we own a whole of a business I want to own shares in, in, in all of the competitors just to keep keep track of what's going on and I want to be able to intelligently evaluate how our managers are doing that and I can't do that unless I know the industry backdrop against uh, against which they're working. Uh, uh, it's amazing uh, you know what how well you can do in, 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 invest, in investing really with what I would call outside information. I find inside information I'm not sure how useful that is but but outside information uh, there's all kinds of information around uh, as to as to businesses and you don't have to you don't have to understand all of them and you just have to understand the ones that you're thinking about getting in and, and you can do it if you just but you, nobody will do it for you. You can't read in my view, you can't read Wall Street reports and get anything out of them. You have to do it yourself and, and, and uh, get your arms around it. I, I, I don't think we've ever gotten an idea, you know, in 40 years from a, from a Wall Street report, but, but we've gotten a lot of ideas from annual reports. Charlie? What I find is that it takes a long time to read the annual report, even if it's a comparatively simple business. As if you really are trying to understand it, it's not a bit easy. Yeah, I would say that on average in a business we're really interested in, even though we know what to skip to some extent what to read, I mean, it, it's going to be f 45 minutes or an hour on a report, and if there are six or eight companies in the industry, that's going to be six or eight hours perhaps, and, and then there are quarterlies and a lot of other. I mean, it, the way you learn about businesses is by absorbing information about them, thinking it, deciding what counts and what doesn't count, relating one thing to another, and... Uh, you know that's that's the job, at, uh, uh, and you can't get that by looking at a bunch of little numbers on a chart bobbing up and down about a you know or 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 reading uh, you know market commentary and periodicals or anything of the sort. That just won't do it. it uh, you've got to understand the businesses. That's where it all begins and ends. Uh, 